Good. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about some recent work uh, with my student Shreya uh, uh, which appeared in the two papers already uh, in December last year, and then one in February, and also there's some uh, still a little bit of uh, work in progress. So, so rough plan for the talk is the following. I will introduce a new concept in all the Just a second, there, there's, there's some sound problems here. Um, I don't... I don't know what's going on. Um, We're getting feedback from Boris. If someone can mute them. Yeah. So could could you mute? Jemdin, could maybe you mute everybody except the speaker? Well, uh, I'm trying to mute, uh, him, but uh, it's not. Mute in the participants list. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah this Boris, that, uh, I cannot mute him uh, okay. for some reason. Yeah, now the noise has disappeared, I think. Okay. Right, yeah. Okay, good, good, so I will continue. So yeah, so I would uh, uh, like to introduce a new concept in operate growth called the void formation. And uh, uh, I will also argue that the uh, patterns of void formation uh, can actually be used to distinguish uh, integrable and chaotic systems. And then I will use this uh, uh, for, uh, for some applications. So one is to study some simple models for black hole evaporation. And also uh, uh, um, uh, a second application is on the entanglement growth, say starting from some far from equilibrium state. So, so we will actually see these two aspects actually are closely related. Um, yeah, so let me uh, uh, say my motivations uh, a little bit more specifically. Uh, so uh, there have been a really uh, very exciting recent progress in showing that the entanglement entropies of an evaporating black hole and its Hawking radiation follow the page curve uh, from a semi-classical gravity analysis. So this really uh, provides uh, um, yeah, among many years, yeah, um, the, the, a very strong uh, check on the utility, say, of the black hole evolution. Um, so, so this is a very uh, a pleasant surprise that somehow what's supposed to be uh, quantum uh, mechanical, fine, yeah, fine quantum mechanical information encoded in the page curve actually is visible from semi-classical uh, uh, analysis. So we can also turn this question around. So maybe the fact that actually is somehow the, the, the fact that the page curve is visible from semi-classical uh, uh, gravity analysis, that may in turn tell us something about the quantum system underlying uh, a black hole itself, okay? So, uh, so this is the philosophy I'm going to proceed. Say, uh, normally, Semi-classical or gravity analysis are very good at capturing physics, say around the saddle points or the change of dominance between different saddles, and which with each saddle representing a distinct physical processes. Uh, so, so it's natural to ask for the page curve, which also have a similar flavor come from the switch of dominance, say of quantum external surfaces. And what would be, yeah, what are the underlying physical processes? And what's, yeah, what, uh, yeah, what change of dominance is actually captured by, by the semi-classical uh, uh, analysis, say, from quantum external surface? So, uh, so I will revisit Page's original derivation of the page curve, and then discuss some other simple quantum mechanical models of black hole evaporation. So, so this will not involve any gravity analysis, really just purely uh, quantum mechanical, uh, or, yeah, just consideration from quantum mechanics. But hopefully uh, 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 the simple quantum mechanical picture we obtained can uh, give some uh, microscopic perspective on the following issues, say, uh, why the turnover, say, of the page curve uh, is visible, uh, uh, visible semi-classically, and uh, say what replica wormholes and the island contribution capture um, and how a black hole transfers information to its radiation. Uh, 
Okay. So since we are just doing some simple quantum mechanical uh, or, or, uh, yeah, models, we will not be able to answer those questions, say, indefinite. Uh, uh, but the, um, yeah, but we will shed some light on this. So the second motivation is the, uh, just a, a, a question regarding the entanglement growth in the general quantum system. Say, let's consider, say, a quantum mechanical many body system, say, initially in the product state, there's no entanglement at the beginning. Or, or yeah, it does not have to be, say, product state, just some kind of far from equilibrium initial state, which is not much entangled. Then, then on the time evolution, the interactions will generate entanglements. And then we expect that, they say, if you look at some sub-region in the system, then the entanglement will grow, okay? So for example, say, uh, say consider one dimensional system, and we consider some sub-region A uh, 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 in this system. And then it's a well-known, then has been well-studied in many, many uh, integrable and chaotic systems. People find that the entanglement entropy for this region A, say if you start with the product state, they grow uh, linearly with time. So there's a very simple and beautiful linear growth with time, and then eventually we are saturate, uh, uh, say at the equilibrium entropy for this uh, sub-region A. Okay. So this was initiated by um, Cardi and Calabresi many years ago. Uh, uh, yeah, but has been done, uh, but now has been studied in many, many uh, uh, different systems. So, but now if you look at, say, say this is a case for, for the region A consists of a single connected region. But if you consider multiple connected region, for example, uh, uh, say a sub-region consi uh, consists of multiple intervals, say in one, in, in, in one spatial dimension. And then you find that the integral by the chaotic systems, they show very different growth patterns. Uh, so here, let me just show you a very simple example. Say, suppose you have two intervals, uh, separated, say, consider your sub-region A consists two intervals, say, of sides L, separated by some distance R. And then you find that in the integral system and the chaotic system, they show very different feature. Uh, in particular, in integral systems, you often see this kind of dips. And uh, say, entanglement entropy, uh, say, initially grows linearly, but then saturate, but then they can show such kind of, uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, 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 dips. But, but for chaotic systems, normally you see monotonic behavior. So yeah, uh, again, people have checked this in many different uh, integral systems and chaotic systems, et cetera. So, so, so sophisticated techniques were developed to calculate entanglement growth in many such kind of integral by the uh, chaotic systems. But the unified physical understanding is missing. For example, say why uh, for, uh, for integral and the chaotic systems, you see uh, 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 such a simple linear growth for, for one interval, but then for multiple intervals, now you see very, very different pattern. So what is behind uh, uh, such differences? In particular, for example, in holographic systems, uh, powerful techniques from gravity can actually uh, help us to calculate such kind of entanglement growth uh, uh, for any number of intervals. Okay, say if you do one plus one dimension for any number of intervals, and then you can just calculate the entanglement growth within gravity. And then here you find uh, actually an intricate pattern of time dependence, okay, say, say for sub region consider multiple intervals. And, uh, and those answers are, yeah, those time dependence are rather intricate, but it's not clear what those answers are telling us. So what are the phys underlying uh, physics uh, uh, is re uh, reflected by such patterns, okay? So, so I hopefully uh, today I will uh, try to convince you uh, 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 to, to understand this question, uh, uh, we need to understand this thing called the void formation. So now let me uh, introduce this concept of the void formation. So, so let's consider, so yeah, for the last, say, a number of years, people have learned a lot in understanding the operator growth, which has been linked to many important problems in quantum chaos, and scrambling, etc. cetera. Say, say in the cartoon picture, so let's imagine, say, inside this, uh, inside this uh, 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 black line, uh, the region inside the black line is the space of degrees freedom, say, of your system, of your quantum system. So, so this can be internal space, can be physical space, etc. But now if initially you start with a simple operator, which is only supported in the small number of degrees freedom, 
And then when you evolve with time, then this operator will be a grow and uh, to, to be supported in more and more degrees freedom. And eventually when you reach, say, uh, um, say so-called the scrambling time, uh, it will be supported essentially in more degrees freedom uh, uh, of your system. And of course, in the way how this uh, operate grow, and then you can use it to distinguish, say, uh, chaotic or, or integrable systems, etc. And so, yeah, so, so very much has been learned uh, uh, regarding this kind of growth process during the uh, uh, last number of years. So in particular, uh, in the space time, say if you have, uh, uh, say, let's imagine there's one dimension, one spatial dimension. Uh, yeah, let's consider one dimensional system. Say if you insert a local operator at the t equal to zero, at x equal to zero, then as you evolve this time, then there will be an emergent night cone in the operator grows, and then, uh, um, yeah, and the, with the operator supported inside this night cone, and uh, uh, yeah, still not supported outside. Okay. So, so now I will introduce, say, actually there's something else going on, uh, 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 which what we call the wall information. So, so the heuristic picture I discussed earlier, again, uh, imagine this inside the circle is your space of degree freedom. So if you have some operator supported in some subset degree freedom, then as you evolve with time, then, then you will, uh, yeah, uh, after uh, scrambling time will be supported, say, essentially by all degree freedom in your system. But of course, uh, in general, the evolution of such an operator is highly complicated. So it contain, say if you, you say expand it in some basis which convenient for your physical analysis, and then uh, the number of terms uh, when you expand inside the basis will, uh, will increase, uh, say, exponentially with time, etc. So, so this operator will become very complicated. So what we want to argue is, uh, uh, is that during the evolution, say, say after the uh, scrambling time, in addition to say uh, this kind of picture, this occupies say the full degree freedom can also happen that there's a part of the operator which have low support within some subsystem A. Okay, so 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 it's supported in the complement A, but within A just given by the identity operator. So yeah, as you should emphasize in this talk, I will always work with finite dimensional Hilbert space so that I can talk about identity operator, et cetera. Yeah, not worry about the uh, things, uh, um, yeah, the divergent issues related to field theory, et cetera. Anyway, so, so, so obviously something like this happens. So if we write it more explicitly, it said we can write the time evolution of the operator into the two parts. And the one part counts, uh, uh, one part which is this uh, O1 come from this, uh, uh, what we call void formation consists the identity operator in subsystem A, and then some 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 up, yeah some some operators supported in A bar, and then O two would be the complement of that. So so by definition, the the part of O two in this subsystem A should be orthogonal to the identity, and then the trace yeah so the partial trace A of O two should be zero. Okay. Uh, sorry, clarification question. Yes. Does, does white still represent the space of degrees of freedom or is it now physical space? Uh, yeah, this is still space of degrees of freedom, but this can also be a, a physical space. Uh, so this is an abstract here, just the, all the region inside this black circle, say it's the abstract space of degrees of freedom. And uh, so, so, so this A is just some sub system. So this say uh, uh, in the one dimension case, A can be say a sub region sure. and you, and also uh, in some, say, internal space, uh, A can be a subspace in the internal space, et cetera. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so since the operator, say, in the Hilbert space themselves form a Hilbert space, say, yeah, here I'm considered finite in Hilbert space. So you can actually define a probability for this void formation, okay? So, uh, and uh, so uh, you can define uh, uh, inner product among the, uh, the operators just by taking the trace, say of O dagger and O, and then and then you can normalize this operator itself, and then you can just define probability for this operator O to form a void in this subsystem A. Okay, and so and so we denote this quantity by P O uh, with superscript A. Excuse me, Hong. Yeah. There there are actually a number of different inner products you can define, right? For example, yes. finite temperature, you have another one. 
So why is this one special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 that's a very good question. Indeed, here, here I'm considering the finite dimension of Hilbert space. Essentially, I'm, uh, uh, I'm considering the infinite uh, temperature case. And uh, so, so I consider my initial, uh, 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 say, say, I, say for my system, I consider my typical initial states, which I'm interested in, have so high energy that actually there's no, uh, no restriction in the phase space from the energy part. Yeah, indeed. So if you want to restrict to some subset of the energy uh, uh, eigenvalues and say finite temperature, et cetera, then, uh, then you have to define uh, some other uh, inner product. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Good. So, um, so now, now let me just give you an example. Say, say suppose, so the picture I mentioned earlier, say if you have a one dimension of, say, Suppose you have a one-dimensional spin chain and you involve an operator, uh, say, at x equal to zero with time, then you see this net picture. But you can also, but, but what we want to advocate is that within this, within this region of support, you can actually develop this void. Okay, you can actually develop the void. So now let me show you an example come from a very, come from a specific simulation of an integrable circuit. And so this system is a little bit special uh, 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 yeah, so this is an example which you start with some local operator, say, sitting at the uh, uh, x equal to zero, say, sigma z, and then you evolve it. And uh, so this system is a little bit special in the following sense. Say, say, say suppose if we evolve a typical system with the initial operator sigma z, and then, then, then as time evolve, uh, uh, say, if you want to expand it in the basis uh, of your operators, say uh, the sigma basis, and then of course involve infinite, uh, uh, involve more and more terms. But for this system, actually, uh, 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 this yeah, this is a particular kind of uh, called Clifford circuit, which actually there's only one term. So this operator, the single operator, become longer and longer, and then you see this white region, so other regions which develop voids. Okay, and so you see actually the void actually uh, 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 appears here in the pretty. Uh, regular way, actually, they form some kind of fractal. Uh, Hong, Hong, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I know that it's different, but you you, you mentioned the holographic case, it, which is not integrable in general, but there is some level of analysis where it is, right, large n, and that's, people studied spin chains in that. Um, so really what I'm trying to ask, is there any, is there any um, role of these voids in, that might be geometrized? In ADS-CFT, or or is it not there in that case? Yeah, yeah, I think that they, uh, uh, one of my yeah one of the points I'm going to make later is that we believe that this void formation do happen in in holographic case, and I'm going to argue actually the formula from holographic formula for this uh, entanglement entropy, uh, the underlying physics is this void formation, but but at the moment we don't have a specific way to see this void formation directly from holography is indirectly by understanding the holographic answer. Okay, okay, sorry, but what does it have to do with integrability you, you were making? Oh, that no, it does not have to do with integrability. Yeah, I'm going to say that uh, this void formation uh, uh, plays a role in both integrable and the chaotic systems. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so in your example, uh, is O two zero? Sorry. In this example, is O two zero? You did this decomposition of O one. That's, right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. This O. Uh, no, no. This O two is not zero because O two. Uh, the definition of two depend uh, de depend on your specification of A. Uh, uh, depend on your specific uh, uh, specific of A and. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, in this case, actually, uh, O2 is zero because, the, because there's just one term. Yeah, there's one, it depends on the basis you are going to use, but in the basis which I'm going to use, uh, say, if you use the sigma basis which is, uh, for this Clifford circuit, there's just one big long term, yeah. Thanks. Okay, good. So you can actually show, using very simple uh, uh, a kilometric argument, that void formation process actually required to occur by unitarity. So there's always some probability 
for it to happen. So you can actually show for any quantum system, the average probability for forming a void, say in some subsystem A, over all initial operators, say, say you average over all initial operators, and just given by this formula, P, uh, say develop a void in A, and you average over all initial operators, given by one over dA squared. And the dA is the dimension of the Hilbert space of the subsystem A, okay? And this formula have a very simple uh, uh, interpretation. Yeah, you can essentially trivially guess it because the dA square is essentially the dimension of the Hilbert space for the operators. So the operator themselves form a, uh, a Hilbert space and dA square is just the dimension of the Hilbert space for the, for the operators. And then since the operator can only take identity in subsystem A, and then you just take one possibility among all the A square possible basis. Yeah. Anyway, just uh, so that gives you this uh, one over the A square. Okay. Uh, so for chaotic systems, so we have done uh, uh, extensive studies in this so-called random unitary circuits. So these random unitary circuits are, are the kind of systems which preserves locality, say, of your um, quantum system but don't have energy conservation, et cetera. So, so they are good models. They're good models for chaotic local quantum systems, okay? So from study of those systems, the, uh, then we made the conjecture that for generic operator O and subsystem A, and as you evolve with time, so by, by generic, we really mean just general operator, yeah, uh, uh, except say identity, et cetera. Say, so uh, for general operator O and the general subsystem A, then the probability to develop a void in A is again given by this formula. But, this, uh, but now this only holds for say, uh, for DA uh, 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 much, much greater than one and for sufficiently large time. Say for example, it should be say longer than the scrambling time say of the subregion A, et cetera, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a conjecture uh, a study uh, we obtained based on study the random unitary circuits. We also done, done some preliminary study, say, in generating Hamiltonian systems, say, look at the chaotic spin chain. And we see some partial support. We don't have a very clean uh, numerical data yet. So, uh, so that part is still not quite uh, available. Anyway, so, uh, so this is a conjecture uh, at the moment that for chaotic system, we believe this is true. And so we call this random void distribution, okay? So in contrast, in integrable systems, the probability for, say, for operator O to develop a void in some subsystem A will depend on sensitivity on operator O and subsystem A, okay? So, so again, let me go back to this example which I showed you earlier. So this is the void formation in the integrable circuits and there's one big operator and then, then the void form in some very specific places. And where the void form depends on sensitivity, this initial operator you choose. And if you choose a different operator, you get a different pattern. Okay, you get a different pattern. And so uh, uh, certainly the random void distribution does not apply for such, uh, uh, for such an integrable circuit. Good. So, so, so with this uh, discussion of the random void distribution and the void formation, so now let me try to see how this can be shed light on the, on the page curve, okay, on the black hole evaporation. So, uh, so let me first uh, review, uh, give a quick review of page, the original arguments for the page curve. So, so this is based on, say, the result for, say, average entropy of a system. Say, let's consider a quantum system. So, L, can, uh, which is a union of B and R. So, eventually, we will take B to be a black hole sub subsystem and R to be the radiation subsystem. And then the full, Hamid, full uh, Hilbert space is the tensor product of Q. And then the dimension will be the product of the dimension for B and R. And so now, if so now if I look at entanglement entropy, say in the typical pure uh, in the pure state for L, and look at say entanglement entropy with respect to the subsystem B, and then if I have a random average of all pure states in L, and then there's this famous result that the the average entropy for B is the same as the average entanglement entropy for R and is equal to the minimum between the cross-grained entropy between B and R, okay? And the cross-grained entropy I just defined 
So this script S, P, and R is defined to be the log of the dimension of the Hilbert space for the, for the subsystem B and subsystem R. Okay, so I will use this notation throughout the talk. So, so keep in mind that this subscript B subscript R goes running to the uh, coarse grained entropies. And so this works. Uh, so this formula works when the dB and dR are much greater than one. Uh, and also the, for dB is not close to dR. Okay, when dB is close to dR, then there are some corrections which we are not interested in. Yeah. So, now, so, so now Page has a very simple model for black hole evaporation. So he just imagine, say, uh, now th th this consists of the black hole subspace and the uh, uh, radiation subspace. And at t equal to zero, the whole thing is just the black hole, just B. Uh, the whole system is just the black hole. And then, then, then as time evolves, some part of the black hole degrees freedom goes to the radiation, okay? And then black hole degrees freedom, uh, the, uh, the degrees freedom in the black hole subspace becomes smaller, and the degrees freedom in the radiation subspace becomes greater, and, uh, and they just saw, so, yeah, just the black hole becomes smaller and the radiation becomes bigger, okay? Yeah, so this is a very simple uh, uh, model for black hole information without any details of gravity, et cetera. But, but you can already derive a very powerful result. Say, if you assume that the full system L is in the typical state, in the sense, by typical state means that the, the behavior of the entanglement entropy respect to those subsystems actually behaves like the average, okay? Uh, behaves like the average. And, uh, and then you, uh, uh, if you say make the assumption they are typical, and, uh, and then you deduce that this typical state should satisfy this behavior, and then, and then that'll give you the page curve, okay? So the cross-grained entropy for the black hole subsystem should decrease monotonically with time because the degree freedom in B decreases with time, and cross-grained entropy in R should increase monotonically with time, uh, uh, um, and the, and the, but, but, the, uh, but the entanglement entropy, you see this hangover at the page time. When these two degrees freedom become equal. Okay. Okay. So, so this page's argument is very general, and the, uh, 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 does not need any details of the black hole plus radiation system. Yeah, at least the uh, uh, the ten over feature uh, 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 is universal. Okay. So as far as the evolution is unitary, so you have to have this kind of ten over. But the highly non-trivial assumption encoded in the page's discussion is that the black hole is actually in the typical state. Okay, uh, so let me just rephrase what we mean by the typical states. The definition of a typical state is a state which behaves a, 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 as an average state. You just say without doing any average, within this typical state, if you look at the entanglement entropy for any subsystem A, then they should satisfy this formula. Okay, so, 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 so we'll take the minimum uh, of the cross-grained entropy for A and the, uh, uh, the complement of A, okay, complement of A. And so this we use as a, uh, a definition of a typical state. So now we can rephrase the page's assumption as a dynamical question. It says, suppose you start with some general state, some general non equivalent state, say, suppose like a star, for black hole before uh, it collapses. And then, then the black hole, uh, then the star will collapse from black hole, then black hole will evolve. And then, then what kind of system actually can evolve from, from such kind of, say, initial state, which is certainly non typical, to, uh, to a typical state? Okay. So, presumably, if you start uh, uh, do a for integral system, that won't happen. Okay. And, uh, and also, what feature of this system uh, can make this happen? Yeah, so this is the question we are going to address. So, so I will now show that actually the random void distribution provides a dynamical principle behind this approach in the typicality. Okay. Good. So, so let me just revisit this page's model and without making the assumption of the typicality, uh, but just only making the uh, assumption that the system is chaotic. Okay. And, uh, and it's chaotic such that it obeys this rule of random void distribution. Okay, and just use the, this to derive this typicality statement. So suppose at t equal to zero, the system is in some pure state, say this can be a star. 
And so I will separate these pure states into the identity. Yes, I'm just looking at the density operator for this uh, pure state. And I separate the identity part, and then the part orthogonal to the identity, which is, uh, uh, say, should have traced equal to zero. So the reason I uh, make this separation is because identity, of course, does not evolve on the uh, time evolution. So, so now if you just evolve it to some time t, say black hole has, uh, the star has collapsed, uh, form a black hole, and uh, uh, we already beyond the scrambling time of the black hole, okay? And then suppose that's the uh, density operator for the black hole at the time, uh, uh, say after the scrambling time. And then, then, then the identity part remained, and then this row zero hat becomes some other uh, density operator, uh, some other operator, which again uh, is traced. So now I will do the following decomposition. So this is a kinematic decomposition. So the hat T I decompose into the subs identity in the subsystem B tensor with some operator in R, or some operator in R tensor with identity uh, in R, and then some, some upper order which is both non, both neither of them are, uh, are identity in the B and R. Yeah. So this you can always just uh, so this is a kinetic, uh, a kinetic decomposition. So of course, by definition, if you don't want the overcount, uh, this OR must be orthogonal to the identity of the in the R, because the, uh, otherwise uh, will be already encoded in this full identity operator. And similarly, OB uh, be, uh, should also have trace equal to zero when you trace OB, and the same thing with OB tilde and OR tilde. Okay. And uh, then, then of course, uh, yeah. So here I'm also subtracting the T dependence. So, so you should imagine the B and the definition of B and R they depend on time. Okay. Uh, uh, B uh, uh, decrease with uh, uh, degrees freedom B decrease with time R increase with time. So, so this then this is what I call the void formation in B. This is what I call the void formation in R. And now we know now we see why they are actually relevant. Because the yeah uh, also here uh, all long trivial operators have zero traces in the respective subsystems. And now we see why they are relevant and it's important to single them out. Is because if you look at the reduced density matrix for row B, and then of course when you take the uh, partial trace in, in R, and then here you just get the identity in B. But then for the row hat D, then all those then all those things will give you zero because they have trace OB and OB tilde have trace zero under the uh, uh, subtrace uh, in the in, in the yeah uh, uh, in the yeah, when you do the uh, um, yeah, yeah, when you trace over R, then uh, 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 then this is the only one uh, 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 which is remaining because this will trace take zero and this will trace will also be a zero under the R trace. And similarly, with the row R, and then you have the identity, and then you have this part from the void formation in B. Okay, and so this comes from the void formation in R. Okay, good. So, so now let's try to understand the feature of this uh, row B. Yeah, so this, uh, this part is identity come from the identity. So, um, yeah, so, uh, so this is, uh, I just copy this row R. So, so what I'm going to discuss, uh, uh, discuss below was identically, say, if you look at the row B. Okay, so I'm just using the row R as an illustration. Okay, good. So now let's, Let's just consider the second Brownian entropy of rho r, okay? And then uh, uh, trace rho r square given by this, and then you just square this and taking the trace, and then the first term just give you that, and then the, the second term. So this is so this. Remember, this is the void formation part. Then I can rephrase this in terms of this void formation probability, which I defined earlier. So this is a void formation for the. So this is a probability. So the OR square trace then it's related for the probability for the row zero hat the initial long trivial operator in your density operator to form a void in B. okay so this is for the radiation part and uh, uh yeah and now if we use the random void distribution which is given by one of db square and then we see that it's given by one of and then this just give you that okay and then you can just write it in terms of coarse grained entropy then you have this exponential form and uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, um, and then and then you get this uh, uh, um, the page result. Okay, you get this uh, uh, page. Result. So here, so here you see that here there's a 
essentially the contribution from these two parts, the identity part and the non-trivial part, essentially just give you a sum of experiences. And so let's give you a heuristic way to see why somehow something like this can be captured by some kind of semi-classical analysis, because we know the semi-classical analysis are good capturing this kind of experiences. So of course, here we are talking about the rainy entropy rather than the entanglement entropy, uh, uh, rather than the volume entropy uh, about the story similar. Anyway, just let me make some comments. So, so the transition in the page curve comes from the change of dominance between the identity and the word formation part. Okay. And, uh, and so, so if I translate these two contributions from the gravity language, say at early times, the cross-grained entropy for the, for the radiation part is small. Yeah, because you, uh, a black hole at the beginning only emits small amount of radiation. And then that's a scale with Stilton as a power zero. It's independent of Stilton. But the cross-grained entropy for the black hole is actually one of Stilton, okay? So, so the word contribution part, then at the beginning, then it's non-perturbity in Stilton and exponentially suppressed. Okay, so, so, so if you do any perturbative analysis like Hawking did, then you would not be able to see this exponentially small part. And, uh, but this becomes dominant after the page time. And so this exponential small part is always there, and, uh, 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 but uh, uh, dominates after the page time. So, so I should also mention that this part, uh, uh, this is also, of course, the precisely the part calculated by the replica wormhole uh, by the uh, Pennington, Shanker, Stanford, and Young paper and uh, which the, uh, they get the exact behavior uh, from, the, uh, from this replica room. Okay. And also I should mention that if you drop this, yeah, yeah I already mentioned that if you drop this uh, void formation part, what you would get is just the Hawkins calculation. Okay, just say the, the, the radiation is given by the cross gain entropy for the radiation. Oh, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Can I go one slide back? Uh, uh, you mean one slide back? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why a uh, row hat of t can be decomposed by these three terms? Um, oh. Can I have yeah. like a, uh, I mean, ask the last term, you have O B tutor times O R tutor. Why is yeah. tensor factorized? Can I just have like a or tutor B1? Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Uh, uh, by, uh, by this, I mean, the, of course, each of them uh, contain many, many terms. Now, this does not mean to have a factorized form. Uh, 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 th this means just you can have many, many terms. Oh, okay. Yeah, some operate in B, some operate in R, but they, they are orthogonal to identity. They're all orthogonal to identity. Oh, okay, so this uh, ha can have a superposition of this. Yeah, 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 right, right. Mm -hmm. In general, a superposition of any such operators, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and the key just this will not contribute to this reduced density matrix. Yeah. So, sir, if I can butt in for a question as long as we're paused. Um, okay. You talked to us about this on the next slide about this general void formation formula where you said, um, as I recall at the beginning of the talk, you said something like a typical operator will have yeah. a void formation probability that is very close to the average. Yeah. Um, for a chaotic system. So, I'm wondering what justifies using that probability here for the state rho naught, which I wouldn't think, like for, you know, black hole evaporation, for example, if rho naught is the initial state of a black hole, I wouldn't think that that would have to be some typical operator. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, no, I don't say, no, the void formation, yeah, I should, uh, uh, there I use the word, not typical, I use the word general. For general operator. Oh, I see. For a general operator, say, say that operator will include, for example, your typical uh, uh, operator come from a product state, come from some kind, yeah, say, suppose you consider spin chain system, if you consider initial product states, and you consider density operator built from that kind of product state, and, uh, and the void formation should apply to that too, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, some general operator, but, but you might be able to find some very fine-tuned operator, uh, uh, for example, uh, say, identity, uh, or almost everywhere, etc. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, so uh, so there's some. Uh, uh, yeah, so one thing I should mention. Uh, of course, this void formation probability it should also uh, constrained by the causality. Say, say, suppose if your system have some kind of emergent causality, then then of course it's constrained by that. Yeah. Good.
So uh, yeah, so in the gravity language, so that gives you that. So you can also generalize this discussion to higher range entropies, which we are still uh, uh, working on. So this part is a little bit tentative. And so, so now if you look at the uh, higher range entropy, then you just take the power of this to higher power. But now the story is more complicated. First, when you take the higher power, there are the cross term between them. Because if you only take the square, uh, the cross term vanishes because all i is traces. Okay, so, so now if you take the higher power than two, and then of course now there will be cross term between them. And also, uh, also uh, you will involve O R to some higher power. Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, because you take to m nth power, and those nth power, of course, is not captured by the probability. So, so here the probability uh, just talk about probability of void formation is not enough. So one actually need to talk about the higher moments uh, uh, of this void formation part of the density object. Okay. So, so here, but the but this void formation probability can actually be generalized. To, uh, to, uh, uh, to higher case. Yeah, say if you take this to nth power, and again, the first term come from the identity, and then there will be many cross terms, and then there will be term come from just taking the power, nth power of this quantity just here, okay? So what I want to argue is that in this case, again, the, despite that there are so many, say, intermediate terms, and this uh, behavior can become very complicated, but for before the page time, the, this identity part will dominate. And then after the page time, the void formation part will dominate. And in particular, after the page time, uh, this void formation part will just uh, at the leading order just given by this formula. By, page, by after the page time, we mean the dB becomes smaller than dr. Okay, so the before page time is dr smaller than d, dr much smaller than dB. And so this term always dominates uh, uh, compared to the rest. But the, after the page time, when dB become much smaller than dr, and then this term will dominate. And in particular, this term will have this term, uh, have this behavior as a leading behavior. Okay. And uh, so, so again, so this can be uh, matched exactly with the, this uh, 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 simple uh, JT uh, gravity theory uh, using this replica one host back Stanford uh, uh, group. And uh, um, yeah, so so uh, so in the sense we can yeah just uh, uh, one thing I even match them say say in terms of that uh, that grammatic uh, 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 point of view. Anyway, so let me just summarize. Excuse me, Hong. Yeah. Did did I understand correctly that this at this point this is answer analysis? You're saying if. I assume that this behaves this way, I get the result of the Stanford group? Or yeah. Have, you haven't proven that this, this uh, void formation behaves like one over dB to the n minus one for general chaotic systems or something? No, 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 we haven't proved it. In, uh, even in the, um, even for the, uh, for the probability case, for the n equal to two case, we only studied the random uh, a local random circuit, and then we had some pre uh, preliminary uh, numerical study. So here, indeed, uh, so right now is to tell you the answer that this will work, and then, then we have some preliminary analysis that this result can come out from the local uh, random unitary circuit, and uh, so, so, so that will be a support that this may happen for the chaotic systems, for general chaotic systems. Good. Um, so, so let me just summarize the, uh, uh, the kind of picture I want to convey. So you can start with your initial operator, uh, uh, a density operator, and then you evolve with time. And then, then, then you can actually decompose the, your time evolved operator. So, so now including the identity. So now this is the full density operator involving the identity now. And uh, you can depose, decompose in this kind of structure. And now the the bottom line is that if you look at the radiation part, the uh, reduced density matrix, it contains a trivial part and a non-trivial part, and the non-trivial part is controlled by this void formation. And then, then, then what we want to argue is that these two terms, these two density matrix actually can exchange the dominance at the page time. 
and uh, 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 in the sense that if you calculate the uh, the reigning entropy for all n, that the before the page time is always this term dominates, this term alone, and after the page time is always this term dominates, this term alone. Okay, so so essentially, just somehow these two parts of the density uh, operator somehow they exchange uh, 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 dominates at page time, and of course that in intermediate time the cross term will be important, etc. And so, so somehow this resonates nicely on the gravity side that the before the page time and after page time they're controlled by different quantum extremal surfaces and they were controlled by different, uh, for example, uh, 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 entanglement branch. Okay. So the remarkable thing we want to emphasize is that the somehow in general, of course, uh, 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 to write this in this way, just a kinematics, but somehow for chaotic system. Somehow, this void formation part uh, actually uh, has universal behavior that we can actually predict this general behavior without uh, uh, going into details of individual systems. Okay. Okay. So, so to uh, to have a cartoon picture uh, uh, for this void formation, the importance of this formation, uh, 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 and this set sounds like this. So, at the beginning, you have this row zero hat, this non-trivial part of your density operator. This is your full black hole system. Okay, and then as time evolves, somehow the import the void formation part corresponding to the operator originally in in your black hole somehow jump outside the black hole to be solely only in the radiation. Okay, so now it's just identity in the black hole. So uh, so it's like somehow the uh, uh, the part of the operator originally in the black hole part somehow just jumped uh, uh, fully into the radiation. Okay, so so you can just Heuristically, you can think that actually this provides to, uh, also a dynamical picture for how the information from the black hole can be transferred from the radiation. Okay. Sorry, but there are this OB, OB tutor, OR tutors that they yeah. do not vanish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Uh, 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 this is a very good uh, uh, point. Yeah. So, so, of course, they also contain uh, uh, important information, etc. Uh, here is just a heuristic picture somehow. That the uh, 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 if you look at the reduced density matrix structure for the row R and uh, and it's this kind of process uh, 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 which become very important say after the page time. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Good. So yeah, let me just quickly mention in words. So you can also study using this void formation uh, study this so called the Hayden Preskill process. Uh, uh, to see how the information transfer from a black hole to radiation. So let's consider, say, you can, you can maximally entangle a subsystem P, say, say some diary, say, of the black hole subsystem, say, with a reference system Q. And then you can just track the transfer of information from the diary to the radiation view of the mutual information between Q and BT and RT. Okay, so, so, uh, and, uh, uh, and so that just boils down again to calculate what is rainy entropies or entanglement entropies uh, 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 among various subsystems? Okay. Uh, uh, um, so, sorry, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, so the what I'm confused about is that uh, one of the things that makes replica almost special is that they turn up in like replica track calculations, but they don't turn up in the calculation of say some two point function, right? Sorry, uh, sorry, I didn't hear the, your last sentence. Somehow your voice was broken a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm saying what makes replica more special is that uh, they don't turn up in the calculation of, say, two point functions. Right? If you calculate the two point function in the state with the, uh, where, the, where the RT surface has a non trivial island, uh, you don't even know, know about all that. Like the two point function is still reliable. Right? But Sorry, you're talking about the two point function of some local operators? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I don't quite understand the question. Say, say your question again, say if you calculate the two point function of some. Okay, so, so suppose you had, a, you had a local operator. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, trace of O, OB wasn't zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let me go. Uh, 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 yeah, so, so you see this, uh, uh, this void formation process, they, they typically expansionally suppressed because the, if you look at any microscopic region and then suppressed by the dimension of the Hilbert space, uh, uh, 
you know, one over db square uh, uh, for that local Hilbert space. And so the typical expansion is suppressed. So only for certain process, uh, uh, they will contribute. For example, uh, uh, if you consider two-point function of local operators, or even to consider OTOCs, then they don't really play much role. But I will argue they actually uh, play uh, important roles, say not only for black hole, uh, also for this generic entanglement growth. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, OK. Right, yeah. Good. So, so, so you can track the uh, transfer between subsystems. And then, so, so as say explained by, by Hayden Preskill, if you have a young black hole, then the information transfer is exponentially suppressed uh, in the cross-grained entropy before the page time. And then the, after the page time, the information just quickly come out. And if you have an old black hole, which means that the, it's already after the page time, then, then whatever you throw into the black hole, then, then essentially immediately come out. Okay. So, so the, so the, uh, again, the original Hayden press scale, they, they assume that black hole is in the typical state by averaging over the Hilbert space, et cetera. So, so, so you can just do the same thing. So, so now you can just show that the void formation, again, provides a dynamical principle for understanding the uh, information transfer. Say, say if you ignore the void formation contribution, and then, 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 then you find the uh, evolution. Yeah, as you already can see from the early example, uh, you find the evolution is no longer unitary. And then you find that the black hole actually, the information actually leaves black hole, but never shows up in the radiation. Okay, so in order for the information to be transferred from the black hole to the radiation, you actually have to include this void formation process. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, as I heuristic said earlier, somehow that's corresponding to uh, the operator, uh, uh, which in some region of the black hole somehow jumps outside uh, of the black hole. So, so you can also consider some more sophisticated uh, 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 quantum mechanical models, say, with more structures. Uh, uh, and then you see this simple picture still uh, applies. And so this is a, a model we considered in our paper, which says, suppose you consider that the, the original system consists, say, of chain, say, of generalized spins. And then, and then, 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 then after each time, say, after each unit of time, and then, then part of this chain becomes the radiation. And then just the chain uh, uh, drops the radiation, uh, it, it drops uh, this generalized spin one at a time. So eventually uh, it drops the whole thing. And, uh, and, then, uh, and, then this, uh, um, and then this black hole part is governed by some evolution, a chaotic evolution, and then the radiation part, for example, is free, et cetera. Anyway, just say so you can put more structure into the system, and then you can calculate it explicitly, and then you find the uh, 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 the general structure described earlier uh, still persists. Still persists. Okay, so now let me, before let me talk about the more complicated uh, black hole model related to the internal black hole, let me just quickly also discuss how this void formation is, uh, is related to the entanglement growth, which is the other motivation I mentioned at the beginning. So, so let's imagine. Well, can I ask say, a, a question before sorry, you move yeah, on? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I'm not sure how literally you mean to, to say that the operator, the information gets out because of void forms. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's a very good. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it, it's very hard. Yeah, I don't know how to put it in the quantitative level. To it to seems like that. the void formation is a very unlikely thing. And it can't explain the fact that the information definitely gets out after some amount of time. So, so what I can show is the following: is that the uh, say just by calculating the uh, various mutual information, what I can show is that if you ignore the void formation, then then after the page time, the black uh, the information disappear uh, disappear from the black hole, but then they don't show up in the radiation at all. But now when you include the void formation, and then they show up as all the one contribution in the, in the, uh, uh, in the radiation. Yeah, so, uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's the aspect you can show explicitly. But, but I cannot really uh, heuristically uh, uh, connect the specific, say, this kind of jump 
uh, of the operator, say, jump outside the black hole to, to any bits of information transfer. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that, that maybe that an important point is that the type of operator that you're supposed to use on the radiation to diagnose the information yeah. is some operator that depends on the whole state. It's not just some kind of approximate mapping of the initial operator, like you just do operator evolution of the initial operator and then take the piece that has made it out. You do some other thing where you, you take this uh, new, very complicated operator that it is not obviously related to the time evolution of the initial operator at all. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's certainly true. Yeah, say 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 the uh, so the operator I described the uh, 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 the void formation is a very complicated operator, and uh, and also I don't claim the other parts of operator don't play a role, uh, other than the void formation part. The other parts certainly they do play a role, uh, uh, somehow in the information transfer. Uh, uh, it it just mathematically, if you draw the void formation contribution, and then you just see the information just don't show up in the uh, in the radiation okay thanks okay so now let me quickly say uh, uh the relevance of this entangled uh, avoid formation just for ordinary quantum mechanical system uh, entanglement growth so now again let's consider uh, uh say just as an example consider one dimensional system i consider some sub region a and then I have the complement of A. So, so let me imagine this system is infinite. So A bar is infinite, okay? So, so yeah, let's consider some, say for example, some one dimensional spin chain. So again, you can consider some, some initial operator, which is uh, 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 some far from equivalent operator. For example, psi zero would be some product states, uh, uh, say product of the, say the, uh, the zero, uh, so the zero states for the for the sigma z, etc. And then, so so you can actually to, uh, so you can actually decompose this initial operator in terms of the sum of uh, uh, of the basis operators convenient for your analysis. Say, for example, uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, as we discussed earlier, you should decompose in terms of the basis which respect this tensor product structure of the a and the a bar. But of course, for realistic analysis, you can also expand in terms of, say, sigma operators for each side, etc. Anyway, it turns out that this is provides a very powerful approach to, yeah, as first uh, described by Ho and Benning, and also by, by Douglas and Mark Maze, and by the powerful approach to understand the entanglement growth, because naively, say, when you expand, uh, say, expand this operator in terms of complicated sums, okay, many, many operators say these spaces operators. But the key is that somehow, so, so this is like operator gas. And turns out that each operator in this operator gas, actually they follow some very simple evolution law, uh, uh, follow some simple evolution. And uh, it, it, just like you can uh, understand the ideal gas very easily because each part uh, molecule behaves generically. And so each operator here behaves in a generic way. And then you can actually use this to understand uh, the, uh, uh, how the entanglement grow in this system, okay? So for example, this row zero, when you decompose into terms of the sum of the basis operators, again, can be separated into this kind of three kind of operators. So one kind of operator corresponding to, you know, again, this region inside A corresponding to, say, the, the degree freedom in the region A, and the, the region outside the circle corresponding to freedom uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the region A bar. So, so you can have an operator which is initially localized in the sub region A. You can also have an operator, yeah, in this row zero, you can also have operators which are initially localized in the uh, sub region A bar, which is identity in region A. And also you can have operators which are non-trivial in both A and A bar, okay. And now you just need to follow the evolution of such operators and then to see how the entanglement grow, okay? So it turns out, it turns out that this linear rule can be come out from a very simple physical picture uh, of such kind of entanglement uh, operator growth, this linear growth, is that if you consider some operator originally in A, okay? And then, then as time evolves, this operator will expand 
say, uh, uh, so we learned that operator will, will expand ballistically, uh, have a light cone structure, and then we will eventually expand outside A. And then that's how it contributes to the entanglement between A and A bar. Okay, so, so this kind of process will lead to the growth of SA. So SA keep growth, and this linear behavior just related to that such operator uh, expand ballistically uh, in the spatial uh, uh, distance. Okay. Yeah, the end point of such operator uh, expand uh, 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 ballistically. Uh, uh, um, yeah. And now this uh, entropy will saturate when all the operators originally in O0 in O0, which are localized inside the A, have expanded out. Okay, so every operator which is localized in, in A, in the original O0, they have expanded out, and then, then the entanglement can no longer grow, and then, uh, then you saturate. Okay, uh, so this is a heuristic picture uh, for this entanglement growth from this picture. Now let's look at what happens to A bar. So by, in, by unitarity, so entanglement entropy for A bar should be equal to that of A. And uh, so, so A bar then should also follow this behavior. So you should linear grow, and then at some time we are saturate, okay? But now if you look at the similar process in A bar, uh, uh, there's a similar process in A bar, so the original operator which are localized in A bar, then they can expand into A, okay? So, so that will lead to the entanglement growth for between A bar and A. And actually, this process will lead to the growth of S A bar forever. Because, the, uh, because A bar have infinite norm, so, so, so operator can come from very far away, originally localized very far away, and then they can eventually go into A, okay? And so, so, uh, so this process, and then the growth of S A bar will grow indefinitely forever, uh, just because A bar is uncompact. Okay, but then this violates unitarity because SA bar should be equal to SA. And uh, so, so we know at some point that this has to saturate. Turns out what saves the day is again precisely uh, uh, the void formation. So, so originally in row zero, there are such kind of operator which covers both A and A bar. And then as time evolves, and then they will, can, they can develop a void in A. It turns out such kind of process also uh, contributes to the, to the entanglement uh, uh, of A bar, uh, uh, to the uh, calculation of S A bar. Turns out that these two processes actually balance with each other and then uh, 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 leads to the saturation of S A bar. And, uh, uh, and this process, uh, 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 this void for, uh, formation process at the beginning is expensively suppressed, but as time goes on, more and more operator, yeah, I will not be able to show the details that more and more operator can develop such a void. And then essentially the number of operators can develop a void also grows exponentially, uh, also uh, grow exponentially. And so, uh, and so, so after a certain time, and then, uh, then can balance this one that leads to the saturation of the SA bar. And so, uh, and then you can show that that time precisely corresponding to the saturation time for the, uh, for the A, okay, uh, for the A. Okay, so, so again, if you grow this void formation, then you just violate unitarity as in the uh, case of a black hole. And so now you can look at the multiple intervals. And turns out that for the multiple intervals, the different patterns of void formation for integrable and chaotic system leads to different patterns of entanglement growth. They will not have time uh, uh, to describe here, but then you can just rewrite the entanglement growth in the uniform way for both integral system and entangle, uh, and the, the uh, chaotic system in terms of this uh, uh, void formation. Uh, for example, for the, for the second very entropy, uh, you can just write them in terms of this void formation probabilities. And the different patterns of this void formation probabilities and then just leads to different behaviors uh, of, the, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 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 of the entanglement growth. And in particular, let me just emphasize one point. So suppose you start some operator localized in this region, so which I uh, uh, highlighted using this blue uh, at t equal to zero, then as you evolve into time t, can actually devoid, can develop a void, say in, in multiple regions, can develop a void in R1, R2. So this operator will develop into operator which is non-trivial in A1, A2, A3, 
but then the identity of R1 and R2, okay? Uh, so this records the void formation of R1 and R2. So it turns out such kind of void formation will lead to actually multi-partite entanglement among regions A1, A2, and A3. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so that's why actually this kind of patterns actually leads to uh, a different behavior. Yeah, uh, 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 precisely this kind of pattern leads to different behavior, say for the integral by the uh, uh, chaotic systems. For chaotic systems, you just have random void distribution, but for integral system, then that sensitivity depends on the initial location of your operator and then the final uh, location of the void. Okay, so, uh, so we can also show, so, uh, so that's related to the EVAS uh, uh, earlier question. So we can show that the intricate patterns of time dependence for entangled entropy in the holographic systems, uh, in the holographic system, can be reproduced from simple calculations based on two simple inputs. Okay, so, so gravity, so, so, so in holographic system, you do certain gravity calculations, you find a complicated answer. But we can just derive it using the following, using the two simple rules. One is that you take your general operator and the, the end of point of the operator, they grow uh, 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 ballistically uh, 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 along some light cone. Okay, so, so, so just operate grow ballistically. And then, then this random void distribution. So then with these two inputs, then you can just de uh, derive uh, uh, this holographic answer, okay? So, so let's give you strong support that this complicated holographic behavior we see from gravity, actually the underlying physics is actually the void formation, uh, uh, this random void distribution. Uh, so this light can ask a question? Open. Yeah, one second. Uh, so this light can grow of open we already knew before uh, from OTOC, from many other things. But now uh, we can actually see from this, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so this, uh, this operator that you're using to diagnose what you're calling void formation, so like void formation in the black hole is the part of the, um, the, part of the state that is, in, that is identity on the black hole subsystem. Yeah. Um, that's the same thing as the reduced density matrix on the radiation. Right, like it's just, uh, that is just, yeah. you know, the identity on the black hole tensor, the, the reduced density matrix on the radiation. Yeah. So it, I guess I'm wondering why, um, I, I'd like to hear your intuition for like why you're choosing to think of this in terms of assuming some distribution on this like void creation versus just assuming some distribution on the um, Renyi entropies of the states because they seem mathematically equivalent. So I'm wondering oh. what the... Yeah, 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 yeah. The motivation so, is yeah yeah so so the uh, so climatic statements uh, are the uh, indeed the climatics what you do is just you separate say for example the reduced density matrix yeah maybe uh, I can go back yeah 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 because maybe too many slides ago because I have to do one by one anyway just say uh, uh, indeed if the climatic statement you can always separate whatever you just reduce density matrix you have into uh, identity parts and then a non-trivial part. And the, uh, this non-trivial part is what we call the, uh, the void formation, etc. And so this is a trivial kinematic statement. But uh, what's non-trivial is that what we are saying is that the weight for this non-trivial part in your reduced density matrix in the original operator, in the original full uh, density operator, that weight follows some universal rule uh, uh, for chaotic systems. Right, but what I'm asking is, is that not the same as assuming that the Renyi entropies of subsystems follow some universal rule? Yeah, uh, uh, but we made the separation, right? We made the separation between the identity and the non-trivial part. Not just the reduced density matrix itself, it's that you Oh, okay. The, the, it's the traceless part, part of, the, of the density reduced density matrix that you're making That's assumptions right. about. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's a simple kinematic separation. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good. So now, now finally, with the uh, uh, with a couple minutes, let me just sorry, I'm running over time. Uh, 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 let me just say very quickly this model uh, for the a uh, 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 simple model for internal black hole coupled to the bus, and so that was inspired uh, by the earlier papers which discussed the similar system in the, in the, in the gravity side. So you can see the two. Uh, so here we just consider some quantum mechanical model. Say you consider, a, say what we call internal black hole, then uh, uh, this internal black hole part just consists two initially maximally entangled, say identical quantum systems. 
and there's no interaction between them, and each is, each is covered by some chaotic Hamiltonian, and then, then each of them is, co uh, is coupled to a bus. And then this bus can either be free or chaotic, it doesn't matter, and then, then the bus are initially taken to the product state, uh, but you can also take it to some other state, it doesn't matter. What it is. So now the bottom line, you said if now if you want to understand the entanglement entropy for the bus, now it's actually become essentially the same question we considered earlier for this just entanglement uh, growth in this spin chain system. Fundamentally, there's no difference, okay? Because at the quantum mechanics level, uh, uh, if you believe quantum, uh, black hole is described by some quantum mechanics, and then uh, uh, the story just becomes essentially the same. And again, so, so, so we can just study the uh, uh, evolution of entanglement entropies and information transfers, et cetera. And, uh, and then, then again, you can decompose the density operator in terms of the tensor bar factors. And so the bottom line, again, there are three kind of process which are happening. So you just replace what previously I called A by black hole and the region outside A corresponding to the degree freedom of your bus. Okay, then, then again, there are three processes uh, three kind of processes happening. So the black uh, operator originally localized black hole can can eventually grow outside the black hole, and the, uh, previously uh, uh, the operator in the radiation part can grow into the black hole, and the operation uh, the operator which in, can uh, support it on both uh, can develop a void. Okay, and then and then so this corresponding to the uh, uh, entanglements, then this contributes to the entanglement of the black hole, and then these two process uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, entanglement growth of the, uh, uh, of the bus. So, so uh, and then you just see this exact the picture, just like what we see in this uh, uh, one-dimensional spin chain system. And so at a certain time, uh, it will saturate, and the, here the page time is given by the cross grain the black entropy, uh, 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 divided by so up to some non-universal constant divided by entropy density, uh, equilibrium entropy density of the uh, uh, of the uh, bus, and the, and then and then so you have two processes going on. So if you look at the, the entanglement entropy of the radiation, you have something which is perturbative in Newton, which is corresponding to the uh, operator outside the black hole eventually involved into the black hole. So this corresponding to the ordinary perturbative. Uh, uh, entanglement growth, and then you have this uh, wo again void formation, uh, which is number two. And again, before the page time, it's, this dominates, but after the page time, uh, these two achieve a balance to give you this, and then and then uh, this precisely give you this island and replica home for contribution uh, studied. Uh, uh, in yeah. Anyway, let me just quickly summarize. Say so here. Uh, use some simple quantum mechanical models. So we argue that switch of quantum dominance, say of quantum extremal surface, should be corresponding to change of dominance of different parts of the reduced density matrix, the identity, and the rest part. And the void formation and the replica wormholes are different ways say, of calculating the same contribution. Uh, so at least at the mathematical, uh, mathematical level, they just corresponding to, they just calculate exactly the same contribution. Uh, but we don't know quite how to relate them, say, specifically in the specific gravity system yet. So, so but, but then that provides some strong hint that somehow void formation should provide a microscopic understanding, say, of the replica wormholes and island contributions. And also, as I explained, using this uh, uh, just entanglement growth for system, uh, for ordinary quantum mechanical system, this void formation is actually ubiquitous in the evolution of a quantum system. So this suggesting that we may actually find applications of replica wormholes in, in less exotic situations. So you don't even have to consider black hole. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I will stop here. Okay, any questions? I Maybe I should co correct the comment I made during your talk. I think it was wrong. Like the this operator, if you just evolve the initial operator out and just take the piece that avoids the B system, I think that's sort of like the this simple version of the Petz map. 
It's mm -hmm. like uh, using just the part of the operator that survives on the R system after tracing over B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that context, there's like a, a better thing you're supposed to do in general, like a finite temperature, which is use the full PETS map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a more complicated formula. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that more complicated formula has some kind of interpretation in the language of void formation. Yeah, there might be. Yeah, I don't know. So, so I want to understand this better. Um, yeah, the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly uh, everything at finite temperature uh, is more complicated. Um, yeah, um, yeah, 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 that's a very, um, yeah, that's certainly uh, uh, something we are trying to understand. Yeah. Excuse me, if I want to uh, describe the black hole of operation using the uh, model with spin chain, mm -hmm. so I want to understand this basic dynamics. Um, in that model, uh, the dimension of the Hilbert space of the black hole in radiation should be time dependent. Uh, should I put it there by hands or there is some dynamical principle which I can introduce? Um, yeah, I say, say if you can see the internal black hole using spin chain, then, then the degrees freedom don't change. Uh, uh, the, the, the degrees freedom for the black hole part and the, the bath part don't change. So, uh, so that's an easier story, which you can just have a, a, a really a self-contained system without uh, adding anything by hand. And uh, then indeed, say if you want to consider evaporating black hole using spin chain, then indeed somehow you have to have some mechanism to to share the information, uh, share the degrees freedom from the black hole to the radiation part. And uh, yeah, I don't know how to do it very naturally. Uh, um, yeah, so, so in the simple model, we consider that we just do it by hand. We just did it by hand, yeah. So um, given your conjecture on uniform void formation, since it's a, a statement on returning to like typical states, is there some way of relating that or some way you think of relating to that to something like ETH or should you see them as mutually exclusive? Yeah, so so right now I don't know how to express them in terms uh, into ETH. Uh, in the end, there might be some connections. So so ETH is just a class of typical, yeah, say so ETH essentially says that the energy eigenstate is also like a typical state. Uh, uh, it's also like a typical state. Um, yeah, so I, so here we we are considering a more long equilibrium situation. Say if you consider initial state, which is far from equilibrium, not very much entangled, but consists of with uh, consists with a sum of of exponentially large number, say of energy eigenstates. Uh, so and then uh, see how it evolves. And when you have exponentially large number of some say extremely large number sum of energy eigenstates using ETH become tricky because then exponentially small parts say of the ETH can now contribute to all the one contribution. So yeah, so I don't know how to directly make connection, but 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 one might be able to yeah in in some situations. Does the Von Neumann entropy have some void formate, operator void formation interpretation? Yeah, right now we don't have a, a yeah, uh, right now we have a gas. Again, it's just based on the idea that somehow this identity, uh, this uh, reduced density matrix, this separate into the identity part and the non trivial part. And then there's a gas you can make regarding the von Neumann entropy. But right now we don't have really any support. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so for the rainy entropy, for all n, we have some kind of support, uh, some pre uh, preliminary support. Uh, but yeah, uh, for, for more new entropy, I don't know the answer yet. But I suspect we may be able to find, uh, uh, yeah, may be able to find uh, uh, a way to understand it. Excuse me, so what about the entanglement of purification? Uh, does this have any interpretation in terms of void formation? or the entanglement wedge cross-section, for example, for two mixed state? Does it have any word interpretation? 
Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't thought much about in that context uh, yet. Uh, yeah, certainly uh, would be something uh, 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 was interesting. Yeah, 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 would, would be interesting to think about. Yeah. For the uh, typicality assumption, you seem to have said uh, just push scrambling was was what you needed, and and for the discussion about the two rainy entropy. For the higher any entropies, I'm not sure if you I may have missed this point. Does that require some higher assumption more than just scrambling, like, like higher moments um, or, or some other thing that maybe would would happen later on, or was it sort of the same point, just scrambling? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, we don't know the full answer. We have some in, uh, a preliminary indication that the scrambling time might be already enough. So, so we have some preliminary studies say in this local random circuit. And there seems like uh, at the time scale which this void formation stabilizes for higher moment uh, does not require you, yeah, yeah, that time scale does not seem to depend on N for the, for the rating index. Any further questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Hong again. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.